Um, so uh, as Hope mentioned, I'm an energy medicine practitioner, but I also incorporate a lot of other modalities with what I do. I use sound, I use color, um, uh, uh, tapping, uh, a lot of, lot of different types of techniques um, to help address whatever my clients need. And uh, I was telling Hope that I, I was interested in this uh, sense of touch because it's making me think a little bit differently about how I teach an exercise to people about actually getting in touch with how it feels. So I liked all of your answers. I thought they were great. And uh, Lara mentioned a hug. Actually, we're gonna have that as an exercise at the end. So <laughs> it's, it's good. We, we call that a triple warmer spleen hug, but we're gonna talk about that towards the end. So in the first class, I talked a lot about the different types of touch. And today's gonna be um, more of a fun experience, I think, uh, using different objects and tools. And I use these in my practice. And uh, it really can make a difference because whether it's a sensation of pleasure that you get or um, a relief of pain, there's, there's a lot of different ways that um, you can achieve things through the sense of touch. You know, just like when somebody hugs you, like Lara said, that, that just feels amazing. Or uh, I talked earlier uh, last, I mean, on Tuesday about um, feeling the touch of a baby against your face, you know, I, so soft and so special, you know. So today, uh, what I'm gonna say is uh, work according to whatever your ability is. Everybody's got different challenges and abilities. Um, if somebody's there to help, that's great. I think most of the things in the beginning here, uh, you should all be able to participate in some way or another. And then a little bit more towards the end, those might be a little bit harder, but we're gonna use a lot of visualization with that as well. So I'm gonna start with a, a quote. I always like to start with one and I like this one. In humans, touch represents a powerful form of nonverbal communication. Our sense of touch plays a fundamental role in daily life, from learning about objects to communicating with other people. And that's Dr. David Eagleman. So I thought it was good since we're gonna be talking about objects today and um, let's get started with that then. So when I was looking for things to work with some of the clients with FOP um, so that they would be able to do some things on their own, I came across the extendable fork <laughs> and I actually found it in a, in a party shop. And this is a great tool because we use this in our energy work with something we call raking. Okay, so you can use a regular fork or same thing if it's hard to reach, an extendable fork. Now what we use this for is you have acupoints, which are little reservoirs of energy. And these sit on top of what we call meridians. They're your energy pathways. And that's what um, acupuncturists work with. So they transport energy to an organ or a system that they're named for. So sometimes they get clogged and they get stuck. And so what I started to find in my practice was that uh, if I touched that area with a fork and just stroked it, it could actually move out some of the congestion in the area. Now it also can feel very soothing as well or ticklish on other parts of the body. And so this is kind of a, 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 an interesting thing to play with. So if you have a fork available, I would have you um, invite you to try to stroke wherever you can reach on your body and just very, very lightly, like a very feathery touch, stroke somewhere, whether it's on your leg or your arm and just do it a few times, but then actually I'd like you to close your eye so that you don't have any kind of outside stimulation going on and just try to get in touch with how this is feeling to you. And you can go up or down with it. And one of the more interesting ones is when you actually start to come up by the fingers and certain fingers might feel a little bit different when you stroke on them. They might have a little bit of an itchy or ticklish sensation. Now there's a technique called teffening 
uh, which is used in uh, foreign countries for moms to put their babies to sleep. And that consists of using the backs of the fingernails and just stroking down the arm very lightly. So it's very similar to when we're using the fork. And a lot of these things can be very um, calming to the nervous system. So it depends on how you feel it because everybody is different and everybody's unique. Some people may like it and some may not, but I invite you to try to explore with this and see how you feel when you do it. And if you have pain in an area, use the fork for your sensation of touch here and stroke it. It's almost like trying to, um, let's say you have a ball that has, and it's very full and you, you, put your, uh, you put something on it, you break up that ball a little bit and things start to disperse. Okay, so that's what you would get from using the fork. And it feels, uh, I've used it like on my back, you know, or down on my feet. I think it's, I love the fact that, I wish they'd make everything like this, but anyway, this is, this is the one tool that I started with. And then the next one that I'm gonna be talking about is, um, let me see which one I wanna do. I think it's a spoon next. So the spoon I've talked about in the webinar that I've done, but if you haven't seen it, I'm gonna go over it a little bit more. So I use a, um, a stainless steel spoon and uh, the stainless steel, it has to do with the properties of the metal that it feels different on the body. Somebody once asked me how gold would feel. I would love to try that. I don't really know how it would feel, but I use this on people's feet to help ground them. Um, my grandkids have decided it feels really great on the head. The back, for people with FOP, I have found it to be incredibly amazing because uh, what they have reported back to me is um, tingling chills, like a sudden, um, almost like a vibration that goes through the body. So I thought that was very interesting. So taking the back of the spoon and just moving it gently, Again, wherever you can reach on your body. And then again, close your eyes so that you can go within and start to see what your feeling is with this as you do this. And it's everything that we do is with a very light touch when we're using the objects because we want to see how our body responds to it. And people have reported that when they use this over an area of pain, it seems to take the pain away. Okay, so it's very interesting for you to try that and see. Also, don't forget about the neck, you know, and if you have an extendable spoon, you can do that with that as well. But especially on the legs, um, I will tell you that I did this on a client one time around the hip area. She thought it was the most incredible feeling she had ever felt, okay? So exploring with this and using this whether it's over the abdominal area, the thighs, anywhere. Play with the object and see how it feels to you. Um, I haven't met anybody that doesn't love it. And I, I carry one in my bag for my grandchildren because it calms them down right away. They just like the way it feels. Um, so the next thing I wanna go over is the brush. So I'm using a plastic tipped brush here. You don't wanna use metal at all because the plastic won't hurt you. So that's the reason for a plastic tip. And you can get them anywhere, Whole Foods, drug stores, things like that. So what we use this for is we tap on the body to break up congestion. And again, it's light touch. So if you have um, a pain in the shoulder or in the leg, or you feel like things are just kind of sluggish and not moving around, Tapping helps to break that up and helps to invigorate you as well. So you've seen uh, people in uh, massage places or if you're in a mall, they pat people down and when they massage them, they use their hands like this. So you're doing something similar with the brush, but again, this is a different feel because of the texture of the little tappers that are on here. And it really is amazing. It is fantastic for shoulder and neck pain. I don't mean tap on the neck, but I mean around here, you would tap. I don't wanna tap on any very vulnerable areas, but um, tapping very, very lightly anywhere on the body. If you're feeling very fatigued, this can help give you a little bit of a burst of energy. 
So that's the brush. Then I'm gonna move on to, um, let's see what the next one I wanna do is, oh, so I have used this with clients. I have um, acupressure balls, and these are very, very good to use because these little points that are on here will stimulate acupoints that are on your hand. And it's a different kind of a touch. It's a pressure touch because you're holding on it and you're pressing on it. But you're also able to move things in your body when you do this because of the little acu uh, points that are here. They will affect acupoints all along the inside of the hand. I also use this on the feet. So you could put this on the ground. And if you're comfortable and you're stable, just put it underneath your foot and roll it back and forth because it'll break up. You know, with people with FOP, what I have found is the foot is very, very tight a lot of the times. And it's because of having to hold that balance together or compensate for the other areas of the body that are, are, are not working as they should. And so you relieve some of that stress and tension when you roll your foot on the ball. And I've had one report back to me um, that they use the ball almost every day. If they're standing, eating their food or something, they put their foot down and they rub it on a ball and they found that they've had more flexibility in the foot when they do that. And it really does, it's a good kind, if it's tender, it's a really good kind of um, uncomfortableness that you might feel at first because it releases and then the foot softens up. So use this, you know, either in the hands, it also helps if you're tight to loosen things up as you roll. In, with the ball. So that's another one that you can use. And then um, I have something called a Konza wand. Um, this feels absolutely amazing on the body. This is um, a, a mix of, um, it's a lead-free alloy of copper and tin. And so the curvature of the roundness of this feels very different when you roll it on the body. It really is, I've heard people say they get rid of headaches using a very small one around their head. So if you ever have the opportunity to get a hold of one, you can buy them online. Um, they really do feel amazing. And again, when you touch one area of the body, even if you can't touch other areas of the body, a lot of times you'll just start to feel it in the other area. Even though you're working, let's say the thigh, or the hip area or something, you may feel it up in the shoulder. So don't think you're limited with this because it does spread throughout the body when you use something like this. All right, next thing I wanna talk about is stones. Okay, so I like to use a lot of, um, this is a rose quartz stone. It fits in the palm of my hand. These are natural stones from the earth, okay? so. It's like bringing the earth inward. So if you're in the house a lot, you're bringing something in from the outside that's very natural. A lot of my clients like to hold this. This is a palm stone called selenite. And they very We use this in our work, our energy work. It actually helps correct what we call irregular energy in the body. So when something's very tight, or not functioning properly, it seems to relax it. We don't know why, but it does. Okay, so, but it feels good, it's cool. The only thing with selenite is you can't get it wet, okay, because it will dissolve. But, so I use the rose quartz. I have um, a piece of labradorite that I use here. Again, it just feels good in the palm of my hand. I, it feels cool. Some stones will feel hot to you, some will feel cool. And so, um, it's just nice to hold it and see how it feels to you. This is a massage um, stone. Okay, it's just curved so that if somebody wants to use it on a trigger point or an area that might be very tender, it's um, less invasive because it's a natural instrument that we're using as opposed to let's say, you know, aluminum or something like that. Uh, it's just a natural stone. So. That's another object that we use. I've shown these um, at other uh, I, uh, FOP things that we've done. This is the ring, okay, which everybody loved when we did them at one of the conferences. But this is a different type of touch because it's grabbing 
So this is like a slinky type um, object, but when you put it on the finger, it squeezes the finger a little bit. Okay, so, so this touch is different, but it's a really nice feeling, relaxing touch, because again, you have, I talked about Tuesday, you have meridian, those energy pathways run through the um, hands and the feet. So when you're rubbing this and you're moving this on the different fingers, um, I have had FOP clients that had to buy like a hundred of them to give them to friends and family because they all thought it was just really fun and uh, calming to play with it and just roll it up and down the fingers. And then the other thing I came up with is if you have a dressing stick, I take the dressing stick, I put a piece of fabric in it. So this is a piece of silk fabric that I have put in here and using it to stroke along the neck or areas that you typically can't reach helps to bring a different sensation throughout the body. It's very soothing, it's natural. Um, you can use, if, you know, like uh, Claire likes velvet, okay? So you could take a piece of velvet uh, and stick it in the stick and then just run it up and down the other parts of your body that maybe you can't reach. And it feels really good. You start to feel like a little chill that goes through your body. So. I would encourage you to try it and, and see how you like it and uh, report back to me if it works, because I'd like to know. So I think that's the, the end of the tools. So I'm going to go into a little bit more of the relaxation exercises or stress reduction exercises. So again, this is where I said, if you can't reach, whatever you can reach, go ahead and do it. But visualize, watch what I'm doing, because we've proven that um, there have been science experiments that have shown that when you watch somebody do an exercise or a movement, you retain benefit from it as opposed to not watching anything at all. So visualize it. Imagine that it's being done on you or how it would feel if you have someone else do it on you. So what I'm going to start with is something that we, we call um, smoothing behind the ears. So the meridian that governs the fight, flight, freeze response runs from the fourth finger up the arm and the shoulder and the neck and in and around the ear. So when we go backwards on it, we're taking energy away from it and we're calming it down. So what we're gonna do is get in touch with, if you can reach with one hand, use one hand. If not, um, then somebody will be able to do this for you at some point. But the whole idea is to place the hands gently. And this is a very um, comforting feel, like when you're a child and a parent comes up and holds your face in their hands. And it's a light hold. So you would start here noticing how the palm feels against the face. And then you would inhale as you glide your fingers up, a different type of touch. Inhaling up, exhaling down. Inhale and now drag the fingers behind the ears. Now I take my hands and dig my fingers into the shoulders. That's a different type of touch. I'm squeezing the shoulder. I'm inhaling, exhaling, and again, gliding my hands down, noticing the glide of this feel, and then holding over the heart and just take a breath in. So I'm gonna do that one more time. So it would be a cradle of the hands, noticing how the hands feel. Inhale up as you glide up. Exhale. Inhale, notice what it feels like when you drag the, ear, the behind the ears, you're pulling energy down. Exhale. Dig into those shoulders. So when you dig into something, you are releasing a congestion that's there. So inhale, glide the hands down on the exhale, and just place the hands over the heart. So again, it's doing an exercise, but being totally 100% in the exercise or the movement when you do it, because you're trying to be aware of how this feels when you do it, not just doing it, but feeling it. 
And a lot of people today have really gotten out of touch with feeling. They, they're more into watching and doing, but not really feeling. Okay, so the next one is, uh, we have what we call neurovascular points. So by the temples, this also works with the fight, flight, freeze. So we place one hand here like this. This is a full palm hold. And then I take three fingers and I place it at the notch of the throat very gently. So I'm noticing that I'm holding three fingers together. How does that feel by throat notch? And how does it feel with my hands on this side of the face? And once I've gotten in touch with that, I'm now gonna breathe with that. So I'm gonna inhale and exhale. Now this is an exercise you could do for a couple of minutes. Inhale and exhale. And one more. And when you're very stressed, you'll start to yawn when you do this exercise. That's how you know you really need it. And now we'll switch to the other hand. So a three point finger notch right by the throat, flattened palm by the temple and against the side of the face. And I inhale and exhale. And inhale. And exhale and inhale and exhale. So something that's just very quick and easy to do but can help reset when you're under a lot of stress. Now the next one's gonna involve a rubbing touch. So what we're actually gonna do with this one is if you can, if anybody can reach by their belly button, um, you're about an inch or two up, now about an inch up above the belly button and an inch out on either side. We have what we call adrenal points there. These are adrenal neurolymphatic points. They build up with toxins and they can get very, very tender. So we're gonna do rubbing motion, it's a deep rub. So where if you can reach even just one point, go ahead and rub that area. Again, it's about an inch up from the belly button and an inch out on either side. So there are two points. So if you can rub both, that's fine. If you can rub one, go ahead and do it. And then notice if it's tender. If it's tender, that's okay. This is a good touch. This is a good rub because it's releasing the toxin. And one point might be a little bit more tender than another point. I'm gonna do this for about um, anywhere from 10 to 30 seconds. Now, I'm going to move up about, I'm gonna, right where my finger is right now, I'm gonna move up another inch, okay? Because these are called triple warmer points here. And I'm gonna rub there and I'm gonna notice, is that tender? Okay, I can tell you mine is, okay? So I don't know if anybody else is, but, and if you have, this is a deep rub. This is not a be nice to yourself rub. This is very deep because that's how you get the toxin out. So again, noticing, different type of touch, not the cradling touch on the face, but a deep rub, but it accomplishes something when you do it. And then the next one, uh, like Lara was talking about the hug, we call this one a triple warmer spleen hug. So what this is, is um, triple warmer, which governs the fight, flight, freeze response, and the spleen energy meridian, both work with the immune system. So we wanna create a balance between them. And the way we do that is we place one hand just above the elbow. So if you can reach there, if you can't imagine that you are extending there, place the other hand under the armpit. That's the spleen meridian. So you're on the triple warmer meridian on the outside, the spleen meridian on the inside. And even though the organ is on one side of the body, we always work with both sides of the body. So we're going to notice that I've got a flattened palm on each one. And it's a little bit of a pressure because this is a hug. This is a balancing hug. And this is bringing some nurturing back to yourself when maybe you're worried about everybody else, but now it's time to just worry about you. So inhale and take a few breaths here. And exhale. And some people almost like to rock a little bit when they do that, that they find that calming too. So you might wanna try that and see if that works for you. And inhale. 
and exhale and inhale and exhale. And some people will go, mm, 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 this feels so good, okay? So again, if it's even one hand, hug yourself with that one hand wherever you can reach, okay? It's letting your body know that you are sending nurturing to this body that works very, very hard for you. And you're, you're giving it some positive feedback on that because it's very hard when you have difficulty in the body to wanna love the body and be nice to it, okay? So we wanna get more from it, as much of it as we can, you know? And I know when I had fibromyalgia, I, I couldn't stand any kind of touch, but I had to learn how to give it some love every once in a while and remind it what I wanted it to do. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna have you do is um, take your hand in a claw type position. So wherever you can reach, if you can reach your leg or uh, abdominal area, wherever you can reach, you're gonna take this claw type motion, uh, position rather, and you're going to go very, very lightly in swirls, okay? You're, you're drawing like little swirls around and you can even gather it around in little circles like this. And I want you to go, you can either go clockwise or you can go counterclockwise. And notice how this type of a sensation feels when you touch the body this way. I've done this, it's especially sensitive around the abdominal area, okay? So if you happen to be able to reach the abdominal area and circle around, around that navel area, it can send chills through your whole body. Okay, but it's the lighter the touch, the more you feel it. And then try to reverse the movement and go back and see how that one feels. I have clients that ask me to do this over and over again because they love the way it feels. So we, we can take it on the shoulder, anywhere on the body. And just notice very, very different type of touch very light. And then the last thing that you can do is um, heart, when we trace hearts, we find it very interesting that hearts are universal. Universal worldwide, everybody draws a heart the same way. Well, we have an energy system that's called um, the radiant circuits in the body. This helps to jumpstart the joy buttons. And so we take our fingers and we just lightly draw a heart around the chest and come down. Now, if you can reach or somebody can do that, go ahead and do that very, very lightly and gently and try it on someone else. I, I would tell you to try it on someone else. It feels really good. Wherever you can reach on your body, you can, if you can't use two fingers to draw a heart, take and draw a half heart and then draw another half heart with your fingers anywhere on your body. Notice how that feels. Again, it's a symbol. Um, we recognize certain symbols and we remind ourselves with certain symbols. And the other one that you can do is the figure eights, okay? So just taking your, your fingers and doing figure eights anywhere on your body and noticing how does it feel when I draw this here. So it's playing with different types of things, but they do move things in the body when you do it. And so I would encourage you to try it and see how it works for you. And uh, let me see if I have any else. So we, we talked about raking, we did some stroking, uh, we used some uh, curved objects, we used stones, we did tapping with the hairbrush, um, pressure touch with the ball, and then um, dragging and gliding and noticing how these types of sensations feel and then drawing uh, for touch as well. So I, I hope that you'll be able to try some of these things out. And again, we would love to hear your feedback on if something does work for you or what you like. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I have um, a few questions, Gloria. The first one is, as you were going through the, like the spoon or the fork or even the non-object touch um, demonstrations that you made, 
does it matter if it's directly on the skin or if it's on clothing instead of the skin? Is there a difference between the contact point? No. No, I've, I've used it both on skin and on clothing and you still feel it through the clothing. Yeah. Um, and then I also wanted to say thank you for all of that because it was a lot and I'm glad that we were recording this because I found it overwhelming to think about like how you could incorporate all of these different things. And I know we did a webinar, which I will send out in the email after um, with the recording of today's session where you kind of walked through what a session that you do looks like with um, a member of the FOP community. But I'm wondering from more of just like a daily routine, because one of the goals of the Focus on Five series is that we identify ways to incorporate these new um, practices into not just like something you do once a day or once every week or whatever, but throughout your day. So do you have a recommendation about like, when do you do these therapeutic touches or these different um, movements throughout the day? I can tell you what I do. So um, when I, every night, I actually spoon my feet before I go to bed every single night. It just is calming. Or if I have a, a pain somewhere, I will take the spoon and I will rub it over an area if it happens to be bothering me throughout the day. Um, if I wake up in the morning, uh, if I wake up in the morning, I do wake up in the morning. <laughs> I do the tap. Okay, because the tapping helps when you've been stiff and you've been sleeping uh, all night long and you need to get some movement going. I find that the tapping helps in the morning. Um, I use stones at night. So I will sit at night, you know, if I'm watching TV or something, and I just like to hold them within my hand. I even rub them on my body. Okay. Uh, you know, I've taken it and just rubbed it all over the body and it just feels really good because it's very smooth on the texture and the coolness of it. So, and the ball, um, I do that at night. Okay. So every night I rub my feet on a ball to keep my acupoints open, especially when you get up around the toes, it really helps to break up that congestion that gets very, very tight with FOP there. You would be Surprised how much your feet will loosen up by doing this. And again, it may, it may feel tender when you first do it, but it's going to be a whole lot less the more often that you, you do it. So I tend to do these things in the morning and in the evening. And, you know, I, I might use a different stone depending on how I feel with it at a time, but the spoon is every single day and the, the brush is every single day, you know, that I, I use it. Um, That's I great. That yeah, those are very manageable um, windows and activities that, you know, it's not like either of those things takes 10 minutes even to do. So um, I think, I know Gloria and I have talked multiple times and one of the takeaways is that, um, you know, energy medicine, none of these techniques are gonna solve all of our problems tomorrow, but they can help. And especially if you put in the time over time to commit and do a little bit every day and, um, invest your energy into caring for your body in this way, that it's something that I know Gloria has, has seen a lot of improvement in her, um, clients or the people she's worked with. So, yeah. And one other thing I would say help is that like, say for smoothing behind the ears, you could take your dressing stick and just come up and around the ears. Okay. And use that movement. Okay. To repeat that movement with that. So you could put something that's small, you know, so that it's comforting around it and just stroke around the ear. Okay. And your intention is there. You will move it with your intention. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Gloria. Um, so I, sorry, does anyone else have questions? I know I kind of jumped in right away there and I wanted to leave time for other people to pose questions if they have any. Um, we are going to, I have just a few more things to share and then we might wrap up early today. Um, so next week will be our sixth and final week. And as you may have guessed, um, with the focus on five series, there were only five senses for us to cover and we've done all of those. So what we'll be doing next week is really some, uh, reflecting on what we've learned across all of our sessions and from all of our guest speakers, and then a little bit of group effort. Um, and brainstorming about how we can implement those. Because um, I think, you know, like 
we just spoke to the point that it doesn't take a lot of time to do um, some of the different techniques that Gloria mentioned, and there's benefit to them. So what are the things that are keeping us from implementing these simple and relatively quick techniques into our daily habit? Um, because I know that I'll just speak frankly, I don't do all of these things every day. And for me, um, you know, there's no reason why I shouldn't be able to devote a little bit of time here or there. So that's sort of what we will be um, diving a little bit deeper into next week and doing some exercises to come up with plans to implement some of what we've learned. Um, so Irving, I think you had a question about for someone who's in a bed um, all day and Gloria, do you want to speak to maybe some of the things that could be done in a, because I think that we demonstrated all of them from a sitting position, but right. from a, a horizontal position, are there specific things or are, can all of these things still be applied? I think that um, you, you could use the extendable objects, okay, anything that you could find that's extendable. And again, I, I happen to get this at a party shop, you know, but um, they do make an extendable spoon, I know as well. So you could use that. Um, definitely holding the, the stones in your hands. And I highly recommend this, the selenite. Most of the people with FOP that I've worked with love the selenite. All my clients like the selenite. So you could um, order that, you know, uh, anywhere. And it's just a palm stone. So holding that is calming. Um, let me see what else. For the touch, um, yeah, I mean, just drawing with your fingers. Okay, and directing it, use your intention that, okay, if I'm drawing or I'm swirling with my fingers on my leg, um, where would I like to send that in my body? Just like I will tell people with breath to direct the breath down through the leg and to the foot to, to loosen up the foot because it's so tight. So inhaling and then directing that breath down to move towards the end of the foot, to move it out, same thing with your intention with anything that you want to do with your hands. Because again, it's body memory and it's trying to restore body memory. So you can draw anything you can draw. If you draw a figure eight, you're trying to encourage a crossover in the body. Right side controls left side, left side controls right side. It's a simple thing. Even doodling um, will help to get that crossover motion, which gets everything else balanced. So I would say um, take fabrics, just different types of fabrics. Like with the scarves, I have uh, maybe 10 different colors of the scarves that I actually use because color affects people very much. So you could take the scarves and just lay that anywhere on your body, put it on your chest, soak in the feeling of the color throughout your body. And notice if you're feeling, um, maybe you need to be, uh, feeling a little bit perky, you know, uh, get out a vibrant red or something or an orange and see how that feels to you. So those are the types of things that I would do for somebody that's bedridden and breath. If you look at the um, webinars or the videos that we put up, I go through a number of breaths. They really move a lot of things. And it, again, it empowers you and it makes you feel like you have something that you can do.